Hello everyone and welcome to our first content-based lecture. Today we're going to talk about literature databases. The main topics that we're going to cover are shown here. Before we get into the databases, I want to tell you about a free software program called Mendeley. You can find Mendeley, just go to Google and type in Mendeley. It'll take you to their web page here. There are two aspects to Mendeley. There's an online account, which is free, and there is a downloadable software program. Um, you can get it for any operating system, or uh, the most common operating systems. Uh, it's super useful to have both. The online account allows you to access your database from anywhere, any computer, and the uh, desktop Mendeley allows for easy generation of bibliographies when you're writing papers. I'll show you a little bit about that now. This is what the interface looks like in uh, Mendeley. Um, and it allows you to organize papers in a variety of ways here. I have a subset of my papers uh, that I've organized by author. Um, notice that I've circled one of them there in the middle. Um, let's see if we can see it there. Uh, the Abbasi uh, paper, and what I'm what I have circled is showing you a little picture of a PDF file. If a PDF file is available for your reference when you download it, it will also down the PDF download the PDF file. Uh, that's pretty useful. Um, that's what I'm I'm showing you here. Um, when you go, sorry for confusion there but when you go and click on the, the papers in your file it will draw up the PDF file and you can read it from within Mendeley that's pretty useful um, and allows you to uh, work efficiently as I mentioned the library is available on the cloud anywhere uh, this is showing you um, a part of my account um, online from a different computer um, it looks a little bit different it's organized a little bit differently but it's still pretty useful The other thing that I really like about Mendeley is that it has some functional plugins. There's a plugin for Microsoft Word, uh, which I'm showing you here. It allows you to, while you're writing a paper, to insert citations on the fly. Um, you can see up on the top left where I've circled there, that's showing you um, the command to insert a citation into a paragraph. This is the paragraph I'm writing, and I'm at the very end there I want to insert a paper so I click on that button it brings up this interface here the Mendeley citation editor I do a search for the paper that I want click OK and it puts it right into the paragraph so you can see now that Lab A et al that's new now I just inserted it you do this as you're writing and then at the end, you will, you will want to generate a bibliography, and that's also super easy. The uh, At the top of Microsoft Word in the Mendeley toolbar, there's a command for insert bibliography. Um, I've selected that, and I'm also going to select the Harvard reference format, and then I simply click on that, and it automatically makes the bibliography, which is shown here. And if you remember, I added the Lab 8 at all, and now that's available in the bibliography itself. If I delete the Lab A at all reference, then generate a new bibliography, it will be gone. And so that's super useful. So I recommend that you download and use uh, Mendeley. So the next topic now is to actually find the papers to put into Mendeley. The first place we're going to go is the National Center for Biotechnology Information and their database of papers which is called PubMed. This is what the NCBI intro page looks like. You can find PubMed. Uh, there's a link on the right under popular resources or there's a pull down menu at the top and you can just pull that down and select PubMed. When you search PubMed it's easy to use just like using Google. Here I've typed in the words uh, the protein map K. You get a search. I found 22,094 papers, as you see where I've circled over on the right. 
if I want, I can select only the review articles. So out of those 22,000, which is too many to read, I selected the review, which are 1,500. That's still too many, but <laughs> we'll deal with that in a moment. Or if I'm interested in those that are available for free as full text articles, then there is, uh, they organize it there as well. You just click on that link and you can see the free articles. If I zoom in here, just you can see, uh, here's an example of a free text. Uh, let's say I'm interested in this paper uh, there on the HPV infection. I click on the title. Takes you to the database record for that paper. Notice that uh, now that we're here, we can save the reference to Mendeley. That's where I've drawn the arrow at the top and say click here, save to Mendeley. I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. Also on the right, there are links to full text, so if it doesn't download the full text, you can go get them yourselves. I'll show you what that looks like also. Here's what it looks like when you click Save to Mendeley. It pulls up this interface here, shows you the paper that you've selected, and then you just click on Save. And then this article will be downloaded to your Mendeley database. Going back to the record then, um, if you select the journal websites, I selected the the one to PLOS One, which is actually the journal itself. You can get the PDF file there. Or, um, actually here if I click on PDF, I know you don't need to see what a PDF looks like, but there you go. So there's the article. You would download it to your computer to read. I've gone back now to the main PubMed database page for that paper. We visited PLOS One, but sometimes the articles are not available on the uh, publisher's website. And if we're lucky, they'll be available as a free article on a resource called PubMed Central. PubMed Central is a place where um, the NIH has been saving and keeping PDF files for people that are scientists that are funded by the National Institutes of Health. The PubMed Central website looks very similar to the journal websites. You click on it, you can get the PDF file. Sometimes it's exactly the same as that from the journal. Sometimes it's a little bit different, um, but the content's the same. One thing it, that is different here is that it'll link to other related articles in PubMed, which you might find useful. So there's a PDF from PubMed Central, just the same as from the journal. Okay, so back to our literature search now. Uh, 22,000 papers is too many. 1,500 papers is too many. 9,000 papers is too many. So if you want to restrict that, you can do that by clicking on Advanced Search. Uh, shown here in the ugly circle for, I've drawn in the middle, uh, you can restrict your searches by uh, filling in the, the fields within the builder um, area there, right in the middle. Notice at the bottom it keeps a, a, a history of all your searches. So my, the first search was just MAPK by itself. The second search here, uh, I decided to restrict it to MAPK in papers that had the word cancer in the title, and that dropped it down to 2,400. Then I decided, wait, that might be too restricted. Let's search for papers that are about MAP kinase and cancer as topics, and that uh, found 9,000 items. If I wanted to see any of those papers, I would click on the number. So if I wanted to see those in search number three, I would click on the number 9,243, and that would pull up those articles. Okay, so that's how you use, uh, and briefly, PubMed. Um, in this class, I'll be able to introduce you to these topics, but you're going to have to do some playing around and searching on your own to really learn how to use these. The next one that I want to talk about is Google Scholar. Everybody's familiar with Google, and you've probably already used Google Scholar before. To find Google Scholar, you type in scholar.google.com. It brings up the familiar Google search interface. And instead of searching for movies or whatever you usually search for in Google, here you would search for your scientific terms. I've typed in map kinase and oocytes, but you could also type in names of authors, um, whatever you want to search for. Google Scholar is fast. Uh, I've circled on the top right, found um, 12,000 articles. 
um, on this particular topic in 0.13 seconds. It organizes them in a variety of different ways. Um, what I'm showing you here is the um, several articles that I was interested in that fulfilled my search characteristics. I've also circled the uh, feature that I like the most about Google Scholar where it categorizes how many times the paper has been cited. So see where I've circled cited by 484? That's a lot. So that lets me know that this is a very popular paper. Um, it has been read by lots of scientists and not only that, cited in their own work. If you click on that cited by 484, it will take you to a new page that shows you the papers that have cited the biochemical basis of all our non sulfate in switch in Xenopus. So pretty neat. Also, if there is a PDF file or a web page associated with this particular paper, it will be linked to on the right. So right there where it says uci.edu, you could click that and get the PDF file of this article. Here's what it looks like when I click on Cited By. So this took me to the papers that have cited the paper. Uh, so this is a really nice way of quickly finding and researching a particular topic because you can find papers that have cited each other, um, which I find very useful. So I really recommend when I'm doing a, a, a new uh, paper or uh, writing a grant, I always go to NCBI and PubMed, and I also always use Google Scholar. Okay, now the FIT library also has resources to help us uh, that are slightly different and I find pretty useful too. So here's the library webpage. It's lib.fit.edu. The two main things that I use are the A to Z databases and the A to Z journals, which I've circled or put a box around in red in the middle. I'm going to click on A to Z databases first. There we go. <clears throat> And uh, um, I've narrowed it down, not all the databases, there's tons of them. So I just want to see the biological sciences databases. And in particular, I'm interested in the web of science, so I clicked on the W. That's taken us to this page here. And then the link web of science is active, so I click on web of science. And it takes us to the web of science interface. This is similar to Google, or similar to PubMed where you type in your search terms and it searches. There's a little bit of a difference here with this one. You may find some different articles because it searches different papers. PubMed is really concentrated with medical journals and it may miss out on some journals uh, that are involved like ecology or evolution or marine biology. So uh, to do a really comprehensive search, you would want to include the NCBI, PubMed, Google Scholar, and Web of Science. Each of those is slightly different, so it may give you slightly different results. This one's worth searching uh, because of that. It also searches and finds information in books, which is pretty useful. I also like the way it organizes information. If you look on the top, towards the top right, or on the right hand side, there's a button that says, or not a button, but a words that say analyze results. If you click on that, you'll see something like this. It organizes your search results into categories. In this case, these are um, categories of science like biochemistry, cell biology, immunology, etc. Uh, so this is sort of a fun way to break, break down your search results. And sometimes this can help you find specific articles. There are different ways. If you look on the left-hand side, you can click on those. Those are links to different organizational methods. For example, here I organize by the source. In this case, the source means journal. Um, and so I can see out of the no, uh, whatever original number of articles I found, 2,481 were published in the Journal of Biological Chemistry. And this is sometimes a good way, too, to find information in a different way. So that's the library search tool. Back to the li main library page here. Back to uh, now I'm going to click on A to Z journals. Under A to Z journals, now uh, you, you could search for specific journal names. In this one I'm searching for the journal Science. 
why would I want to do this instead of just going directly to the science page? Well, if you go to this through the library, you can find it like this. It will show you where we have access to free full text articles. So if you're interested in a paper published in 1890, you would you could find it here. So Science Magazine from 1881 to 1922 in the Biodiversity Heritage Library. You'd follow that link. If you're interested in a modern one, say published a month ago, you could click on the link that, that's down towards the bottom from 1997 to present in Science Magazine. In fact, that's what I'm going to do here. That will take you to Science Magazine. This is the most current one, or as of yesterday, or a few days ago, last week. And, and now you can get articles, papers from current Science Magazine. This is very useful if you find that you can't get it through PubMed or Google Scholar or Web of Science. Um, sometimes they're super expensive. I always go to the library and search the journal and go to it through the library. If you look up towards the top, you can see that Science Magazine is recognizing that we've gotten to them through the Florida Institute of Technology. And sometimes you can get papers for free that way that you can't get any other way. Okay, that's a quick, super fast tour through literature databases. Here's how you're really going to learn about it, by doing some work on your own. Here's your homework. It's due next Wednesday, so one week from today. I want you to prepare a report uh, on the topic of mitogen-activated protein kinase and cancer. Now, within that topic area of those two terms, there's lots of different subtopics. So you choose what you find most interesting. Decide what you're interested in. Use uh, PubMed, Google Scholar, and Web of Science to find the top five articles for every each database. Import them into your Mendeley account and, and then write a short report about the information that you found. And then generate a bibliography. Um, and that is your homework for this week. Okay, let me know if you have any questions. Send me an email. We can meet. Um, or we can try to deal with it over email, however you prefer. Have fun.